Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Guido Montage provided an update this week on the approach his department could take to the reform opening the way for embedded generation plants of up to 100 megawatts in size to proceed without a license. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what the minister said and what it could mean. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What is the background to this 100 megawatt reform? Well, the overarching background is an electricity crisis that has lingered in South Africa for over a decade. And the fact that Eskom is not in a financial position to build the capacity that we need to close what we think is a, an immediate gap of at least 5,000 megawatts. So there's been a clamor over the last few years to allow uh, private companies, mines, farms, factories to a, a, a little bit more flexibility in building their own generation. And to do that at a scale uh, that makes sense in terms of the economies of scale you get with larger plants and to remain grid connected, which is very important for the system. It's, it keeps electricity uh, low cost if we're able to share our electrons through the grid. So th that's the sort of background to this reform, which is to the Electricity Regulation Act Schedule 2, which is really to make it uh, uh, easier for uh, companies to invest in their own capacity and to share uh, their, their surplus using the grid to wield that power, to trade that power, to enter into uh, relationships with non-related parties, which is key. At the moment, the threshold is one megawatt, so it's very low, so you can't extract the economies of scale benefits of larger plants. And the, the, also there's major restrictions on being able to use the grid uh, without a license to, to uh, trade that electricity with non-related parties, parties. So you're at the moment only allowed to trade with related parties, so a company subsidiary, for instance. So there was a, a growing call for change, and we saw that a, a amendment, a draft amendment was put out for public comment, raising that threshold to 10 megawatts. There was a lot of backlash towards that, saying that's far too low and wouldn't bring the benefits that I spoke about earlier. And at least the threshold should be raised to 50 megawatts. And there must be this ability to wheel through ESKIM and municipal networks and to trade with non-related parties. And then on the 10th of June, the president intervened uh, together with uh, the minister, Gwede Montash, and made the announcement that the threshold would be raised to 100 megawatts, which is really very, very high and is much welcome. And that there would also be a, a opportunity to wheel power and to trade that power. So that's the sort of background to the to this reform. And there were 60 days, a uh, 60 day process that would be undertaken to uh, revise the, uh, the Schedule 2 regulation and then put that into a gazette so that the, uh, the reform could take hold in the economy. What has the minister said about the approach NOSA should take to registration? Yes, there was always concern when the announcement was made that the devil would be in the detail. And we are getting into that phase now. And obviously, uh, you know, these plants of this size, they would need to get their environmental authorizations, they would need to get their grid connected, uh, grid code connection permits. And they would need to also, you know, enter into counterparty agreements with, uh, with the ESKIM or the municipality if they're going to wheel where they'd have to pay for that, uh, that service. So those were given. But now there seems to be a feeling coming out of the department and from the minister who spoke this week uh, that there will be a permitting process at, uh, at the NERSA level. Uh, that was not what was envisaged. It was going to be a registration process. And that would just merely be a, a nod to the fact that these plants had, had got their, their water license, their environmental approvals, their grid connectivities per those permits. But now it seems like there's going to be a, a, a super permit over and above. And this has raised a lot of eyebrows and a lot of concern because it's basically moving registration into a quasi licensing type situation. Now, the minister did say that he would, this would be time defined and limited two months. That does offer some relief, but I don't think this is what was envisaged when the reform was first uh, thought about uh, and uh, was called for. 
So th this is raising a lot of concern. If it's going to be a quasi licensing process, I think there is going to be a lot of unhappiness because NOSA hasn't got a great track record, even with registration. These processes have taken far too long. And uh, I, I think seeing is going to be relieving that they can meet that sort of two months uh, uh, time frame or time limit. So there is a lot of concern. What could this mean for the effectiveness of the reform? Well, you know, there's another pent up supply that's ready to go. We know that the mining industry has said that there's projects with about 27 billion rand that will probably uh, enter into some sort of shovel ready state and get going. There's a lot of other industries that are also looking at this could be unlock a lot of investment and it could help close that gap at 5,000 megawatt plus gap immediately, which is vital to give Eskom the space to get its fleet back in order, as well as to give Eskom the space to start reforming itself and become a, a fit for the future utility at the, you know, when it, once it's split, Eskom generation needs to become a renewable lead uh, generator. And it doesn't have space to make those investments. It doesn't have the time and space it needs to just keep these old coal-fired power stations going uh, with band aid and chewing gum. It's really a, a difficult situation for them. We need space. We need this investment. We need this capacity. And if this is morphed into a quasi-licensing process, I think it does create a whole level of new uncertainty, policy uncertainty, which this whole reform was about, you know, getting out of the way. So I think that the, the, well, the devil will be in the detail. And one of the good things that Mantash said this week is that this, uh, this proposed revised uh, amendment will be given to the presidency, which has really been a key driver here, Operation Bull and Lela, in getting this reform moving because the, the minister has been highly resistant. So hopefully at that level, uh, there will be an alignment and to alignment really to the needs of the electricity supply industry of Eskom as well as the economy, rather than to some ideological position. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.